I just want to start this video by stating that we will not be showing any photos of the incident itself. All we will be showing are a couple of photos of people on stretchers being rushed to ambulances at a distance, no blood being visible. We also won't be going into detail regarding the injuries sustained. We're here to talk about what led to this happening, how the current trans hysteria fueled by leaders of the so-called gender critical movement has emboldened violent bigots to the point that they're now attacking professors on campuses for simply being accepting of trans people. But first, a quick content warning for the following. Transmisia, hate crime, and stabbing. If you like our work and appreciate the research put into each video, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon. You can also support us by liking, commenting, and sharing this video on social media. Hey there, my name is Alfred Thurston, she, her, they, them, and today we're taking a look at the recent gender-critical terrorist attack at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada, in which three people were stabbed. The incident took place on the 28th of June at the University of Waterloo, specifically inside a Philosophy 202 gender issues class with around 40 people. According to witnesses on the scene, a young man entered the classroom and, quote, asked the professor what the class was about, closed the door, pulled two knives out of his backpack, and proceeded to attack the professor, end quote. He attacked three people in total, the 38-year-old woman professor and two students, a 20-year-old woman and a 19-year-old man. Thankfully, nobody died, but all three sustained serious injuries and were subsequently rushed to hospital. Police were called and the culprit, a 24-year-old man named Giovanni Vallauba Ailman, was quickly arrested and taken into custody. Police have since stated that they believe the attack was hate-motivated, relating to, quote, gender expression and gender identity, end quote, likely due to the fact that said classes are typically trans-inclusive. Indeed, the academic community has spoken out about the incident, with Jennifer Hoshan, a law professor at the University of Calgary, comparing the incident to the 1989 Montreal shooting, in which an anti-feminist walked into Montreal's polytechnic school and murdered 14 women, injuring a further 14 people. She stated, quote, It shaped my career choices, and I despair at the fact that, although I'm nearing retirement, we still face this type of gender-based violence. Enough. End quote. Meanwhile, Jeremy Johnston, an assistant professor at Canada's Western University, tweeted out that, quote, Stabbing attack during a philosophy of gender course at the University of Waterloo today? Remember that right-wing culture war and transphobic propaganda is never just about discourse, debate, or the potential for violence. It's about actual violence, end quote. So it's clear that this act of gender-critical terrorism is having a rallying effect on many professors, leading them to speak out about the environment which cultivated this violence. And that's what I wanted to take a little time to talk about here. Because we've covered the gender-critical movement extensively on this channel. We've covered the ways in which they promote fascist rhetoric surrounding trans people, and the way their policies targeting trans people harm cis women as well. How, when trying to force trans women out of spaces they've been using for more than a decade at this point, at least in the UK, their methods always limit the way cis women can express themselves before they're targeted under the assumption that they're trans. How cis women, particularly those who are black, South Asian, or belong to gender non-conforming subcultures, such as butch lesbians, are disproportionately targeted with harassment by self-declared sex police, who make it their job to harass strangers in public bathrooms about their genitals. This is a girl, and you guys are harassing her because she's a dyke? And I'm a man. I'm a fucking female. This is a girl. Do I have to tell you again? You have ID? No, I do not. Get out. Get out. Get out. You got no ID? Get out. This is so sad. Out. Oh, and she's a girl and you're yelling in her face. That's crazy. Right? Don't worry, I got no. you. I got Put you. On me again, bro. Wow, look what you... Oh, okay. Get out, sir. Get out. Man. That is a fucking girl. I'm fucking that is a girl. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You have no ID. Let's go. Go, sir. So you're saying you have to have an ID to go to the bathroom? Get out of my way. Hey, you can all leave if you want to go. We are all leaving. We are all like I said, this is a girl. Don't put your hands on a girl. Let's go. Come on. No, That's fucking... I don't come here to my God. 
We've also covered the way that gender-critical leaders, like Kelly J. Key Minshall, also known as Posey Parker, have called upon men to introduce firearms into those situations, quite literally threatening cis women who don't perform femininity in line with their fascist standards, with very real, potentially life-ending violence. Um, had a bit of an idea about some of the things that you can do, and men, for once, I'm talking to you. I'm talking about you dads who maybe carry, I think that's what you say, uh, I'm so down with the American lingo, maybe you carry, maybe you don't, uh, maybe you consider yourself a protector of women, maybe you're that sort of man, um, maybe you have a daughter or a mother or a wife, uh, maybe you have a sister, maybe you just have some friends, maybe you just think women are human and you don't need any absolute connection with them to feel compelled to protect us. Um, I think you should start using women's toilets, men, because you have every right to self-identify. Clearly don't do it and upset women and girls that are already in there, but just make a point of doing it and maybe make the women feel okay about you doing it if, you know, if you come out and you frighten someone. Uh, but it's about time that you started using women's toilets and saying that you identify as a woman if stopped. And I think that's how you're going to have to, that's one of the many ways that you are going to have to combat the insanity of self-ID. Even if it's not called self-ID, that's pretty much what you have now in the United States. And that's how you men are going to help. Uh, and there's going to be no excuses. And you either care about the women and girls in your life or you don't. But you are going to start inserting yourselves into spaces that are specifically for women and girls. Uh, maybe you're going to do it uh, when you go to your kid's school and they've had to inject this federal nonsense of accepting boys into girls' spaces. Maybe you need to make a point of saying to the head teacher that you're going to go and use the toilet and ask where the girls' toilets are. Um, and you're going to make this really embarrassing for everybody who's going along with it. I'm talking about you dads who maybe carry... I think that's what you say. Uh, I'm so down with the American lingo. Maybe you carry, maybe you don't. But it's not just harming cis women as part of an effort to harm trans people. Members of the gender critical ideology are very open about their desire to annihilate any cis woman who stands in the way of their fascism, as can be heard in this clip of Key Minchel, taken from a now deleted live stream from February this year. Each and every uh, one of you women who stand in my way, each and every one of you, let me just tell you, you will be annihilated. Because I, I genuinely don't lose. Again, this is a woman who orders cis men to enter women's bathrooms to threaten anyone who didn't look like a cis woman, talking about her desire to annihilate women who support their trans sisters, which, fun fact, is the majority of cis women. It's also 96% of lesbians. That's who she is threatening here, going on to compare the very existence of trans women to child abusers and domestic abusers as justification. Some, some person who's either abusing her kids or uh, is, is gaslighting their partners or dressing like a woman and invading women's spaces. They report us to the police and the police listen. Like, Jesus! It's not hard to see how rhetoric like this has emboldened violent bigots to target cis women, like the professor at the University of Waterloo, for having an open discussion that is inclusive of trans people. And Key Minchel is not alone. She has the full support of other gender-critical leaders, leaders such as J.K. Rowling, who took to threatening queer journalists on Minchel's behalf for daring to point out her fascist rhetoric and supporters, including sick hiding Nazis who turned up to reinforce Minchel's Melbourne hate rally in Australia. We covered this in one of our recent videos, along with J.K. Rowling's open support for raging anti-Semites such as Magdalene Burns and promotion of the fascist idea of degeneracy. We've also recently covered how gender-critical leader Graham Linehan outed himself as a sexual predator in posting photos of a trans person's genitals to Twitter without their consent before he and his audience went on to mock sexual violence against cis women, violence which has claimed lies. All because, in their eyes, 
all violence in service of their anti-trans ideology is justified violence. What happened at the University of Waterloo, whilst tragic, is not at all surprising to those of us who have been paying attention. The gender-critical terrorist at the University of Waterloo was not acting alone. He was acting on behalf of the likes of Kim Minchul, J.K. Rowling, Graham Linehan, and the rest of the leaders of the gender-critical ideology. He was acting upon the sexist, anti-Semitic, racist, and transmusic narratives they have spent literal years constructing. This is stochiastic terrorism, and every single leader of the so-called gender-critical movement is responsible. They all have blood on their hands, and no matter how desperate they are to try and wash it off, it is the duty of every civilized person on this planet to never let them forget. It's not trans people who are stabbing women professors on university campuses, it is them. That is a fact they cannot deny, no matter their sickening protests. History will not remember them fondly, for when their storm passes, each and every one of them will be judged for the violence they encouraged, for the bloodshed in their names. We will have justice. Though what do you think? Is this the first clear example of gender-critical terrorism? Will there be further incidents going forward? Will this act as a turning point in combating the rise of anti-trans fascism? Did you notice something I missed? If so, be sure to let me know down below. And if you appreciate what we do here and want to help out, please consider becoming one of our wonderful patrons who make our work possible. On that note, we'd just like to thank the following people. Matthew Kovac, Gert Van Voorst, Hannah Banghart, Marble Wings, Sosh Daniels, Flynn, and Higgins the Seagull. And for myself, Adita and Levi, take care now.